Alright everybody, welcome back to another, this is going to be a quick series. I say quick, I don't know how many videos this is going to take, but today we're going to talk about Entity Framework. I recently delved into Entity Framework Core and I implemented it in my MVC ASP.NET app and I thought I would make a quick little video series, um, multiple videos on how to use an Entity Framework Core and we're going to SQLite for our database of choice. You can use Entity Framework for different databases, Oracle, SQLite, uh, SQL Server, MySQL I think is out there. Pretty much anything you can think of. But today we're going to talk about using it with SQLite just because SQLite is free to everyone. It's, it's lightweight. Uh, it should be easily used by everyone watching this video and I thought you know the skills can transfer depending on the database you want to use in the future. But some prerequisites you're going to want. You want to go Google DB Browser for SQLite, and you'll want to download this. I've showed this in a few videos in the past where we use SQLite databases. What this does is it allows you to create a new database if you need to, but we're not going to need to. Entity Framework is going to do that for us. But if we want to browse the database, look at the data, this is a good way to do it with this application here. So just download that uh, if you plan on following along. But And in this video, we're going to create a new ASP.NET Core MVC app. Uh, I think I'm going to put a form, and basically we're just going to add new users, I think is how I want to do it. We're going to have a model for users, and we're going to take that model and create a database table with Entity Framework Core. And that's what today's video is going to be. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's open up Visual Studio. I have 2019 here and I am going to create a new ASP.NET Core web application. So we'll click on that. Uh, if you don't see it, make sure in the Visual Studio installer that you uh, have everything necessary downloaded already, and then we'll hit next. That was really weird, it wasn't letting me type. Okay, I'm gonna call this like EF demo, maybe. And that looks good. I will hit create, and it'll go ahead and create all of the basic uh, well, it's going to ask us this, that's right. We want a web application model view controller. And I'll briefly just run it just to show you what it looks like. Let's hit create. It'll make everything for us and then we'll run it real quick just to see what the web app looks like. And we'll hit this IIS Express up here. It'll build it and deploy it for us. And I think this is going to open it up in Chrome, for me at least. And it does in my other window. Let's look at it. It's pretty basic. It has two little buttons here in the nav bar and then the home button. Um, well, the home's here twice. You can click on the title of the website or home and then privacy. So what I want to do, I want to add another button. It says users and this will be probably in the next video where we actually add users. Uh, and I want to type in their information, hit save. And Entity Framework is going to be our middleman and it, we're not going to have to write any SQL. That's the beauty of it. Uh, it makes it super easy to add and read any of the CRUD methods, right? Create, read, update, delete. So let's go ahead and close this. And pretty much all I need to do is I want to create a model. And we're going to call this users. And I'm going to hit add and then class in the models uh, folder here. I'm just going to call this user model maybe. <laughs> And we can go ahead and make some properties. I'm just going to type prop and then hit tab, and that'll do like the, I don't know, shortcut version of it. Um, we can have int for ID, and what's cool is Entity Framework, when we actually use it, it's going to see this, and this is like a keyword for Entity Framework. It's going to notice that that's going to be the primary key, and it's also going to auto increment for us, which is nice. Um, so let's make another property. You can add whatever you want, you know, if you can think of your own. I'm just going to put name. Uh, what else? Maybe email? So that'll be another string, and it'll be email. And what else would we want to do? Maybe name and username. How about that? Public string. I should have just hit prop. Let's do that. So this will be string, and then this will be user name. Maybe we should make email, capital E, make everything consistent, and ID, capital I. There we go. So that would be our user model. Like I said, you can add different things if you want or change it up however you like. And now we need to install Entity Framework Core for SQLite. So we'll go to Tools up here and then Manage, or the NuGet Package Manager, and then Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. 
And then we go to browse and then I'll just type in entity and it looks like I remembered from my last project. So we are looking for Microsoft.entity framework core and then dot SQLite right here. And I'll choose a project I want to install it with. That's just the EF demo and then install. And then it'll ask us to accept. I say, yeah. So besides our user model and then any other models we want to add, maybe we want like a, uh, maybe this is like a car website. We'll have a car model and it'll hold like an ID for that. It'll hold the car's name, the year, manufacturer, whatever. Uh, we can add as many different models into Entity Framework as we want, but I'm just going to have one for simplicity. But I'm going to add another class in here, and this is going to be our context. And what our context is basically going to do, it's going to tell Entity Framework when it goes and it does its thing, uh, what all the models that we're going to use with Entity Framework. So I'm going to call this demo context. We'll hit add. And then this is actually going to inherit the DB context from, let's import Entity Framework Core. So we're going to use Microsoft.Entity Framework Core to bring it in. Okay, and now it recognizes it. So in here, we're going to go ahead and list as a DB set. And then inside of this, angle brackets, we're going to put in the class of the model. So in our case, it's going to be user model. And then we're just going to call it whatever, so I'm just going to call it users. And then we're going to set and get. And then if I had other models that I wanted to use Entity Framework, I would do like the same thing, uh, and I would add that model. So we also have an error view model that was already created for us. If I wanted to add those, I could do it like that and just keep adding. But we just have the one. And then one last thing we need to do is we need to override a method called on configuring. And basically what this is going to do, it's going to tell Entity Framework where we're storing our database. So it's going to be a path on your hard drive somewhere where you're actually storing your SQLite database. So this is going to be protected, override, void, and then on configuring. I can't spell. Wow. And then this is going to take in a DB context options builder. So let's just double click that so I don't have to type it all and then call it options. And we're going to do the arrow function, say options dot use SQLite because that's the database type that we're using. And then basically we're just going to tell it what path are we putting this database. So where I want to put it is I have a temp folder in my C drive, so it's going to be C, temp, and then whatever I want to name this database. Uh, I think I'm just going to name it demo.db. All right, so something I forgot we also need, we need to install as a NuGet package Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Tools, and you can either do that uh, just like we did before, so that's how I'm going to do it. Um, let's see if it's here tools. Yeah, there it is. So we're going to install this as well. We'll hit accept. Okay, so that has been installed and now I'm going to open the package manager console. It's right above the manage NuGet packages for solutions. So we're going to open that up. That'll come down here, our little console. And then we're going to do add migration initial create. And what this will do is it'll create what's called a migration. Basically, that's just, well, we'll look at it really quick. But it's just a bunch of rules when it goes to create the database. And then what happens, as you change your database and your models over time, this will keep track of those changes for you and try to best solve how it wants to change it from where it was now uh, to where it's going to be. So I'm going to run initial create or add migration initial create. It's going to build it. And then here you can see our first migration. So here it is. It took our table that we gave it because we gave it a model for users. And you can see it has all of the different properties of that. It has ID and it says it's going to be an integer and it's going to be auto increment. And we have name, username, and email. Those are all text and they're all nullable. Uh, well, false because this is a primary key 
and then true for the rest because we didn't put required with any of the properties. If we wanted to, we could have done something like this. Let's go back to user model. Now let's say the name is required. We can do this required in square braces and then we're going to bring in system.componentmodel.data annotations and then that'll say, oh, name's required from now on. Uh, but we didn't do that before, so that's why it's nullable. Okay, so back to the console down here. We're going to run one more thing. It's going to be called update database. And this is going to, since our database doesn't already exist in the path that we gave it, it's going to go ahead and create it. So there it goes. Building, build succeeded. Ah, I see what I did wrong. Okay, so let's go back to our demo context. We actually have to say, so this is basically a connection string, but I didn't do the connection string right. We need to say data space source and then equals this path. And then I'll save. So now might be a good time to make a second migration since we messed it up or I messed it up the first time. So let's do add migration again and then call it something. Let's call it uh, second create. Okay, and now let's update database. So now if we look, we have a new database in my temp folder on the C drive. We have demo.db and let's open that DB browser. And we'll hit open database at the top and then go find it. So here it is, demo.db, let's open it. And then here you can see there's a new table in here. It says user, so let's browse data. Now we have ID, name, username, and email. And if we go back to database structure and we expand users, you can see the types that they are, integer, text, text, and then you can see ID is an integer and not null. And it has the key, so it's a primary key. So that's all I wanted to do in this first video. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and create our form, and then we're going to use Entity Framework to easily put all of the data from our form into our database. And uh, look forward to that. So thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.